In an interview recently, President Donald Trump called for the jailing of Obama administration officials involved in the Obamagate scandal. And yes, Donald Trump has said it was all the way to the top. It was Obama. It was Biden. So perhaps a little strong to say, but perhaps not unfair to report as the Daily Mail did. Trump demands jail for corrupt Obama and Biden over unmasking of hero Michael Flynn and says Biden lied to ABC's George Stephanopoulos when he denied knowing anything about the case. Now, if you've been following the mainstream media, they will tell you Obamagate is fake news. Donald Trump is just trying to distract you like he always does. It's a familiar tale with Trump. Well, that's not true, unfortunately. I found that many of these mainstream media articles talking about Obamagate don't actually tell you what it is. And they try to argue not even Trump supporters can tell you what Obamagate is. Well, that's actually kind of fair. You see, the story is so complicated going back several years with dozens of individuals involved. Yeah, it is a very difficult story to tell. But let me give you a very simplified version. First and foremost, Obamagate is not fake news. There are very strange happenings very, very, very uh, important questions that must be answered. Why did Barack Obama know about the investigation into Michael Flynn before the Department of Justice? Why did Joe Biden seek to unmask the name of Michael Flynn in violation of his Fourth Amendment rights? Who leaked Michael Flynn's name to the press? But more importantly, the question that must be asked above all other questions, why was the FBI trying to get Michael Flynn fired? That is your wedge in the door. I said it before, I'll say it again. To anybody who is unfamiliar with Obamagate, can't wrap their head around it because it is complicated or doubts it, I ask you this. Start here. Why was Michael Flynn being investigated? There are many answers. The reason the charges against him are being dropped is because it appears there was no investigatory basis for questioning Michael Flynn. More importantly, though, if they really did want to go after Michael Flynn with the Logan Act, something that's never been done before, why would they say they want to get him fired. Which brings me to the main news. Trump saying they're corrupt and demanding jail time. While many people will assert it's fake, please just answer me the question about getting someone fired because there is no answer. You pull on that thread, see where it leads you. Well, Donald Trump certainly has strong opinions. So let's do this. I want to take a look at this story. We've also got many stories about how this negatively impacting Joe Biden. This is one of the things Democrats are really scared about, that Trump's messaging is working that the story being told is working, even though the mainstream press will tell you it's fake news. It is, in fact, working. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can give. The best thing you can do, share this video. Because like I mentioned, the mainstream press won't tell you what's actually going on. They'll deflect. They'll lie. And not all of them. There are some good people. But many of these big stories are calling it fake news. And I'm going to show you a bunch of these big outlets. But if you just want to watch the video, then subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And hopefully that's enough to make sure YouTube actually shows you the videos because believe it or not, earlier today, I had one of my videos shadow banned by YouTube, which is kind of scary. I'm willing to bet the the stories I'm doing like this one are going to result in me getting banned. I, I really do believe it. It goes against the grain, against the mainstream narrative. So I'll say it one more time. If you really, if you really want to support this video, do your best to share it. You, you, you owe me nothing. You don't have to, but I don't think I'll be long for this platform. And I I mean that literally. And honestly, let's read the news. The Daily Mail reports. Donald Trump demanded Sunday morning that former President Barack Obama and former Vice President Joe Biden face jail time for involvement in the Michael Flynn case. Quote, it was the greatest political crime in the history of our country, Trump said of his predecessor and Biden, the presumed Democratic nominee. If I were a Democrat instead of a Republican, I think everybody would have been in jail a long time ago. And I'm talking with 50 year sentences. The president continued. It is a disgrace what's happened. This is the greatest political scam, a hoax in the history of our country. And people should be going to jail for this stuff. And hopefully a lot of people are going to have to pay. Biden and Obama reportedly knew about the FBI seeking an investigation into the incoming national security advisor and then administration uh, and then and the then administration, Obama purportedly requested to unmask the identity of Flynn. Trump lauded the case being dropped against General Flynn, who had already pleaded guilty under oath, and the president called him a hero for dealing with the charges. The gist of the story, and I'll tell you what, it is complicated. The FBI sought to close its investigation of Michael Flynn on January 4th. That same day, someone in the FBI, Peter Strzok, requested they leave it open. The next day, 
Obama's chief of staff sought to unmask the identity of Michael Flynn, meaning they were they had access to communications of his that they had incidentally received by spying on someone else. But but you're not allowed to see who this person is. The chief of staff for Obama sought to figure out who this person was, revealing that it was Michael Flynn. Obama then had a meeting with Comey, Biden, Sally Yates, Susan Rice, some other people where the Logan Act was brought up. The Logan Act says you can't claim to represent the U.S. abroad. The law has never been used. They used this as a pretext to go after Michael Flynn. Someone in the administration, at the very least, this is what we have, illegally leaked the information to the press, who then created the story, which probably freaked Michael Flynn out, who in, a, an, in an informal meeting lied to the FBI. Or may have, we don't know. The FBI 302 is missing. These, 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 we have very serious questions. Where's the FBI's uh, 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 302 form? Basically, their form pertaining to uh, what happened with Michael Flynn. Gone. Where's the evidence? These questions need to be answered at the very least. Obamagate is a real scandal. Perhaps, as the mainstream media would like to believe, there's nothing here, and it all ends up a big nothing burger. Okay, well, right now, we need these questions answered. These are very serious charges and very strange things that we, we can't quite understand. Let's read some more. Quote, this was all Obama. This was all Biden. These people were corrupt. The whole thing was corrupt, and we caught them. During a wide range interview with Sunday Morning Futures, Trump also said he watched Biden's response to the allegations that he knew about the investigation and intent to prosecute during his interview with ABC News's George Stephanopoulos. Quote, I watched Biden yesterday, could barely speak. And he said he didn't know anything about it. And now it just gets released right after he said that. It gets released. He was one of the unmaskers, meaning he knew everything about it. So he lied to your friend, George Stephanopoulos, the president charged. We don't know for a fact what Joe Biden knew, but this is true. In an interview with George Stephanopoulos, Joe Biden said, I don't know anything about these investigations. When pressed, when George Stephanopoulos said you were in the meeting, he says, oh, I thought you meant the prosecution. Oh, no, I only knew about the investigation. Then it turns out because of the declassification of some documents, we now learned that Joe Biden on January 12th, the same day the Washington Post published the name of Michael Flynn, Joe Biden sought to unmask Flynn. I can only presume it was to confirm the story. I do not believe Joe Biden to be the leaker, but somebody provided this information to the press in violation of the Fourth Amendment rights of Michael Flynn. And Joe Biden did lie about it. He said he was he was pressed. He backtracked. I believe I believe he's lying. They are going to talk about uh, a covid and a bunch of other issues, but let's keep this one focused on what's happening with Obamagate. Here's what you can expect to hear from the press. The Washington Post. Trump's playbook on Obamagate is extremely and dubiously familiar, basically equating it to how he told Hillary Clinton you'd be in jail, saying it's just old Trumpian tactics. But wait, there's more. How about this one? from Vox. Trump's latest Fox business interview was an elaborate distraction campaign. Trump wants to change the topic from coronavirus to conspiracy theories, and Fox is helping him out. They've also written uh, other stories, Aaron Rupar of Vox, claiming that Obamagate is fake. But what I love about all of these stories is that they don't actually tell you what Obamagate is. They don't give you the fair assessment. There are certainly some well-known mainstream sources that do, and we'll get to that. CNN what Trump is trying to achieve with Obamagate. Let's read a little bit of this one. This is from uh, Julian Zelizer, political analyst. He says, with the nation in the middle of a horrendous pan- pandemic, President Trump has decided to devote much of his time fueling the Obamagate conspiracy. Trump went on a Twitter rampage last week. But when a Washington Post reporter pressed Trump earlier this week to explain what Obama did, the president failed to clarify and said, you know what the crime is. The crime is obvious to everybody. All you have to do is read the newspapers except yours. On Saturday morning, he started the day with a tweet that inaccurately stated scandal has defined the Obama administration. Donald Trump didn't clarify. That's true. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean he did or didn't know or understand. It just means he didn't give a good answer. And you can criticize him for it. That was his opportunity to rail into Obama. He didn't do it. I think he should have. Bad move, Trump. Oh, well, what, what, what do you want from the guy? Obama gates real, unfortunately. But I love this part here. It inaccurately stated that scandal has defined the Obama administration. I'm I'm sorry. I believe that is very, very accurate. Did you know that during the Obama administration, they were spying on uh, foreign leaders, apparently on the Senate, on members of Congress? Yeah, Obama had a lot of scandals. How about the extrajudicial assassinations? I'm not going to get too much into this stuff. 
But let me just point out that Obama had a lot of scandals. I mean, Benghazi, these things happened under Obama. He did have many, many scandals. How about the National Defense Authorization Act? The indefinite detention provisions. Yeah, they existed. But CNN won't tell you that. Here's one from The New Yorker. Obamagate is niche programming for Trump super fans. Well, this one, unfortunately, is actually kind of fair. You know why? It is incredibly difficult to explain what's going on with Obamagate to the average person. To the people who are in the weeds and have been following this for years, there's a lot to know. There's a lot to understand. I have been asked several times since I did a video about Obamagate, what does unmasking mean? And that was one of the biggest challenges in putting together a video and explaining why it's so serious. Unmasking is a violation in this capacity, seems to be a direct violation of Michael Flynn's Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure. I have I have always been in opposition to these overbearing FISA warrants and spying, and that's what we get. I'll give you a quick rundown. If the U.S. government spies on a foreign individual, sometimes they capture the information of Americans. They have no right to spy on the American, so they don't get the name. But in their official duties and invest in, in investigations, they can seek to unmask the Americans to figure out what's going on. What was the investigatory basis of the Obama administration to unmask Flynn? We don't know. And that's one of the questions we would like answered. Why? Why did you unmask Flynn? Why did Joe Biden unmask Flynn? It, it, it could be uh, it could be routine uh, work. There could be nothing wrong, but they should have to justify why they're invading the privacy of American citizens, especially when no crime was discovered. And especially when on January 4th, the FBI actually wanted to close the investigation until Peter Strzok intervened. And there's a lot more controversy between that him and the attorney, Lisa Page, and a lot of serious questions that need to be answered. But we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Here's Forbes. As national polls show Trump trailing Biden, he doubles down on Obamagate narrative, which brings me to the next bit of this segment. Is Donald Trump really scared of losing? I don't buy it. We have seen all of these stories where it's like the Trump administration is losing. They're panicking. They're freaking out. I just do not buy it. Donald Trump's aggregate approval rating today is higher than when he got elected. Donald Trump's approval rating, according to Gallup, is higher than both Bush and Obama. So please spare me the narrative that Trump is freaking out and trying to distract. What I think we might actually be seeing is they're using it, not because they think they're losing, but because they know it will work. The GOP seeks to go on offense using Flynn against Biden, this story from The Hill. Two Senate committees are now investigating former uh, president, former Vice President Joe Biden's role in the unmasking of Michael Flynn. As Republican senators seek to go on the offense with an issue they think will damage the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee while helping them retain their majority. And guess what? The Democrats worry Biden will be defined by Trump's attacks. It's not about Trump losing. The polls are irrelevant. That's a false framing. Let me show you the story one more time. As national polls show Trump trailing Biden, he doubles down. They're trying to connect the dots that don't need to be connected. Sure, national polls show Trump is trailing, uh, uh, you know, Joe Biden is winning. But does anybody really think that Trump is going to do well in California and New York? No. So national polls are relatively meaningless. What we need are swing state polls. Now, those are divided. In some states, Joe Biden is doing well. Some states, it's close. Some states, you know, Trump is doing well. In one poll, Trump was beating Biden in Ohio. That's hilarious because that was Bill Maher's reason for defending Joe Biden. He's the only one who beats Trump in Ohio. Unfortunately, not according to some of the latest polls. But when it comes to national polling, I find it to be mostly irrelevant. Now, take a look at this. Trump approval at Gallup highest, better than Obama and Bush. You want to tell me Trump is concerned about, his, about whether he's going to win or lose? Look, I know Trump is trying to win. That's why he's, he's going full into these mess the messaging about Biden. But let's be real. Donald Trump is going after Biden and Obama because he wants vindication because he's personally slighted. Anybody who denies that Donald Trump has got a major ego problem is lying to themselves and everybody else. Donald Trump is very narcissistic, very arrogant, very egotistical, and a lot of people really, really love him for it. I think Donald Trump has got some character issues, but Donald Trump certainly believes he's going to win. He rags on sleepy Joe Biden all day. He's got the national polls showing approval ratings. And there's something interesting here. Donald Trump's stealth voters. The amount of people who approve of Donald Trump in the aggregate differ from the amount of people who say they'd vote for him. 
That doesn't make sense. And I was reading a story the other day that said that that didn't exist before. We haven't seen that in Obama or Bush. This shows us there are a lot of people that think Trump is doing a good job, but won't publicly admit they would vote for the guy. When you when you can see that Donald Trump has got a higher approval rating than Obama, I don't think Trump is going after Biden or Obama and the Obama administration with Obamagate because he's scared of losing. I think it was an attack on his character, on his person, and he takes that seriously. He takes that more seriously than many other things. Look, you want to criticize Donald Trump. You you can. If there's one thing I think we can all agree on, the man certainly loves himself. He puts his name in big gold letters on top on, on buildings. So whether you think this is a defense of him, I don't care. The point is, I don't think Donald Trump Trump is really concerned about him losing to Joe Biden. I think what he really cares about is how history will remember his name. This is the aggregate polling from the from real clear politics. We can see Gallup has has Trump plus one, which is amazing. His uh, his highest polling was actually uh, a few weeks ago. It dropped down and spiked back up right now to 46.4. I believe the highest we'd ever seen it was 45.9 when he first got elected until this major point where it peaked at 47.3. As of today, Donald Trump's approval rating in the aggregate, not an individual poll, is higher than when he was elected. I really do not believe that that Donald Trump is scared. Now take a look at this story from uh, The Hill. Sanders advisor warns of alarming trends that could lead to Biden's defeat. Everybody thinks Joe Biden is on track to lose. Everybody thinks Donald Trump is on track to win. I say everybody, but most people. When polled, I believe the latest poll we looked at, and, and, and I'll be fair, man, I don't know if these polls are worth anything. I'm just, this, it's the best we have to work with. There was a poll that showed 55% of people believe Donald Trump will win re-election. Bernie Sanders does. I'd be willing to bet the Democrats do. That's why they're worried. Trump's uh, attacks are working. But check this out. The Hill reports. A top advisor to Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign warned in a memo on Friday that former Vice President Joe Biden could lose the election in November because a significant portion of Sanders' supporters are currently unsupportive and unenthusiastic about his candidacy. The memo, written by Jeff Weaver, who recently launched the American, America's Promise Pack, aimed at turning out progressives for Biden, said the presumptive Democratic nominee faces a clear and dangerous trend that could block his path to the White House if he does not address the shortcoming with Latinos, working class voters, and young people. There's a real and urgent need to help Biden consolidate Sanders supporters. If all of Sanders' base turned out for Joe Biden in November, he could defeat Trump and take back the White House. All four Democrats, here's the problem. Significant portions don't currently plan to. I got a conspiracy theory for y'all. It's not real. I'm kidding. But here's what I've been thinking. I'm willing to bet a bunch of young Bernie Sanders supporters will secretly go and vote for Donald Trump. And I think the reason they're going to do it is to spite the Democrats, but not just spite, but also a strategic advantage. I don't know. I, I don't know if I think there'll be a large percentage or what, but I think people on the left will do this. They will vote for Trump. They want to stick it to the Democrats and they want to be able to say afterwards, we told you so. If Joe Biden actually wins, it proves all of the progressives were wrong. It proves that Bernie Sanders was the wrong choice. It proves Joe Biden and centrist, moderate corporate Democrats is the right choice. It is in the best interest of the progressives that Donald Trump wins right now. That way in 2024, they come back and say, enough, you had your chance and you were wrong. It's our turn. Joe Biden actually wins. The progressives, the Democratic Socialists will never get their chance because it will just prove you need a moderate and you do. And that's a fact. But regardless of what's true, I think they're going to want to, well, I'll put it this way. They say the ends justify the means. I believe progressives would vote for Trump so that way they can say, oh, no. Oh, how did Trump win? Oh, heavens. This, how could this happen? Next time, vote for our guy. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know for sure, but I do think Donald Trump will win. Now, as it pertains to Joe Biden, uh, <laughs> I think he's got some other trouble here. Stacey Abrams is really messing up his play. The Washington Post says Abrams public push for Veep slot complicates Biden's search. More than that, it's hurting the Democrats and Joe Biden. Now, before we read into this and we'll, we, we wrap this up, I just want to point out the mainstream media's obsession with calling Obamagate fake news has nothing to do with the election for the most part. I, I, for the most part, has has little to do with the election. Donald Trump highlighting it also 
little to do. Of course, the mainstream media will attack Trump and call him a conspiracy theorist, hoping that it, it hurts him. And of course, the GOP and, and Trump may, may see a benefit and realize that going on the offensive against Biden and Obama will help them. But the reality is the media, the, the allies of the Democrats and the Democrats, they don't want to see their administration go to prison. You know how bad it would be if Obama did have to you know, answer questions, if Biden did get caught, if someone in the FBI under the Obama administration did go to prison? be very, very devastating and scary. And they're going to try and stop that. This is an information war. It really does seem, based on all the evidence so far, Obama was involved in some shady dealings. I'm not going to go so far as to say I accuse or anything like that, but we definitely need answers. And that's why I said, hey, you know what? If we entertained a special counsel investigation for three years against Trump, why don't we get the same thing against Obama? I don't like him. I think they're silly and dumb. But I think it would be unfair to deny that now that we know Russiagate was, was a hoax, what happened? Well, of course, we have the Durham investigation, so we'll see how things plays out, play out. But when it comes to the election, we will wrap it up with something hilarious, glorious, and sad for Democrats. I'm sorry, man. Democrats, y'all have just lost the plot. What is this? Stacey Abrams wearing a cape shrouded in mist with sun. What are they doing with these? The Washington Post published this. You are making the Democrats look so dumb. They don't get it. Can you even stop for two seconds and think about what Donald Trump is? Why would you do this? Stacey Abrams has been trying so hard to be the vice president. We can all see it profile after profile. The media is really pushing on it. And Biden may have to pick her because the media forced it. But she lost in 2018. What is she doing now? Just trying to run for vice president? Look at this picture. This reminds me, look, Donald Trump is the letter, what, what is it called? The letterman jacket, you know, frat boy jock of the, of, of the high school. He's standing around. He's a big, tall guy. He's laughing. He's got a, all of his little, you know, his little commanders and lieutenants laughing, high-fiving him while he goes, look at that one, that horse face. Yeah, she's so ugly. And they're all laughing and they love it. They love it. He's the bully and they vote for him because they know with the bully on their side, nobody will bully them. Along comes Stacey Abrams and Joe Biden. Abrams wearing what looks like a cape. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Literally, Donald Trump's wearing a suit. Now Joe Biden's wearing a suit too. So Joe Biden walks up stuttering and stammering and forgetting where he is, hanging out with this friend who wears a cape. I'm sorry, man. People really do vote based on how people look, whether they're cool, what they think about them. Emotions play a huge role in this. Donald Trump has really inspired a lot of hatred. People really, really don't like that guy. He has driven Trump derangement syndrome. And you know what? He has the media to thank for that. But of course, he has himself to thank for that, too, because Trump can be bombastic and boisterous and, and narcissistic. I'll tell you this. I don't care if you like or hate the guy. The people who like Trump, whether you agree or not, I think you need to recognize. I think you do recognize that people don't like his attitude. And that plays poorly for him, but it also plays well. A lot of people do like it. But I'll tell you what. When the American people are trying to look for who is going to represent them to in foreign policy, what are they looking at? Donald Trump is very arrogant and boy, is he a bully. What does that mean when he steps up to Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un and the Ayatollah or whatever? It means he's, he's going to be sitting down in this meeting. Think about this for, for two seconds. Donald Trump in a meeting with Iran and Iran says, we want sanctions lifted before, you know, we, we ease tensions. And then Trump's going to just cut him off and go, excuse me, excuse me. No, no, no. You do what we want. We are not playing games. No, excuse me. Cut him off. Done. And everybody knows it. He will not give these people the chance to speak. He will shut them down and say, you do what we want. And that's, the, that's what America wants. And Americans are going to be like, it's good for us. Think about Joe Biden and, and Stacey Abrams in her cape sitting there. Th what's funny is Joe Biden may be, may be a placeholder, right? Let's play this game. Joe Biden sitting down to this meeting and he's just mumbling and muttering. No one knows what he's saying. And they say, sure, just sign these papers. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. signs them. Doesn't even know what he's signing, gives away a bunch of our oil or whatever. But let's say he's a placeholder. So they put him in his wheelchair. You know, he, he comes in, he's all tired and shaking. And they say, of course, he's not the real president. They wheel him out of the room and in comes Stacey Abrams wearing her cape to sit down across from, you know, Iranian leaders. And you know what? I'm sorry, man. That image, this image may be the end of her opportunity to actually run for anything. Stacey Abrams. I got nothing personal against her. I don't know a whole lot about her policies, but I know the Democrats are really bad at being cool. Okay. They, they, I don't, I don't know. Don't, don't ask me why. 
But this photo is, is, is wow. She's wearing a cape. If you haven't seen this, check it out. She's wearing a cape. You take this picture with, if, if, I swear, if Joe Biden picks this woman, that's, this, this, this is it. Who was that guy who yelled like yeehaw or whatever and it destroyed his campaign? I can't remember the guy's name. This is that. This is the yeehaw moment. She's wearing a cape, dude. And we'll see how things play out. Can't say life is boring. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast News. It is a different channel, and I'll see you all there.